as a result of disruption in essential services. Visits to hospitals for normal outpatients have been reduced or put on hold, raising concerns about proper medical care for ailing children and kids with chronic medical issues amidst the raging COVID-19. Here's what parents should know about the medical care for ailing children at a time like this. As COVID-19 continues to spread, children with special health needs and chronic or complex medical conditions like cancer may be at increased risk of poor health care or even death. This is due largely to limited treatments, therapy and medical support arising from the pandemic which has seen health facilities around the world hugely overwhelmed. Bala Yusuf Yunisa, Senior Technical Advisor to the Office of the Senior Special Assistant to the President on SDGs, gives an insight. COVID-19 has challenged the health system. This is precisely what we're talking about uh, because already uh, we had uh, issues around um, lack of funding, lack of qualified uh, frontline health workers um, and, and, and sometimes lack of equipment. And with COVID-19, that is even more pronounced because we've seen how medical doctors uh, and frontline health workers at the frontline, you know, were actually um, um, having to even begin not to appear in their respective posts for the fear that they don't have the personal protective equipment, you know, that will enable them to discharge their mandate effectively. Uh, so to that, and, and by the spillover, is that other basic healthcare services, prenatal, antenatal, uh, 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 prenatal and postnatal care uh, 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 services were gen then re relegated to the background because there isn't the space to accommodate this and many other uh, um, uh, uh, illnesses. So this is precisely the impact we are talking about. Though it is factual that children have been relatively spared by the viral coronavirus disease, there are, however, evidence that some may get infected. More at risk are children with underlying health conditions who require frequent visits to the clinic or urgent hospital care. Prominent Monday Odin, Executive Director of Untold Story Behind the Story Foundation, an NGO that creates awareness on childhood cancer as well as raises funds to help treat underprivileged children with cancer and other complex medical conditions spoke about the plight of some of these children. The sophisticated symptoms for children affected with cancer is not like the ones with um, adults that we know that, okay, this is breast cancer. You don't know if this child is actually cancer. If until you do investigations, you probably do a biopsy, you know. That's, so if a child says, this is what is wrong with me, you need to bring the child to the hospital. COVID-19 or not COVID-19, you need to get the child to the hospital in as much as there's a restriction. Cancer spreads like in the next one hour, it has gone viral. So you need to take it as, as cautious as it is, as it's coming, deal with it that way, so that you give, you help the child live. There's pressure on the health sector the world over. And because of this pressure, because of this attention being paid to uh, the virus, other kinds of ailments which are equally life-threatening, you know, are being yeah, receiving less attention. Sufferers are probably just quiet, probably dying in silence, you know, are probably receiving less attention. Ordinarily, you would expect that before now, they will have enjoyed a higher attention, but they are facing some kind of inadvertent neglect, which is also very, very unfortunate. COVID-19 has come to challenge our health, to affect our health, we're concerned about it because we need a good. We need to have a good health to be able to bring about economic development and progress in our polity. You know, so in, in the same way as we're dealing with COVID-19, we shouldn't forget other deadly diseases as well. In the face of the challenge, with some hospitals rejecting patients, experts have recommended the option of telemedicine. This, notwithstanding, 
is however indisputable that children battling ailments like cancer at this time still have to keep up visits to medical facilities for proper treatment, especially chemotherapy. With shortage of medical personnel to attend to non-COVID patients and fear of ignorantly admitting outpatients with COVID-19, reportedly resulting in hospitals rejecting patients, becoming a source of concern to many, experts advised that people should visit the hospital only when it is absolutely necessary. Actually, because of the whole restriction of movement, the, my patients that come to the hospital majorly are the, probably the ones on chemo treatment. That is the one that comes every month for his treatment because he can't avoid, he can't stay out of his chemo treatment. So those are the ones that come, but generally speaking, children with um, sickle cell, they have like in the hospital where I work, their parents have a WhatsApp group. They are graded. The children, there are some that are from 0 to 10. There are some that are from 12 upwards. They graded them. So the ones 12 upwards have a phone. If you, are, if you have a symptom, you just do WhatsApp call with your consultant and with your nurses and all that. If it's the ones that you now need to come to the hospital, the parents break them. But usually, those ones that have challenges, have, their parents have a way of talking with their doctors via WhatsApp, we have a WhatsApp group for them. I think the way forward, it is for us to massively uh, invest in, in provision of um, uh, personal protective equipment so that our healthcare professionals will be protected and then they are enabled to render other service and, uh, services that they're supposed to, that are critical to the delivery of healthcare in addition to uh, handling the uh, COVID-19 outbreak. And that has to be uh, uh, a collective responsibility, both state and non-state actors. And we have seen how the organized private sector has come to, uh, to reinforce the, the public sector uh, during this COVID, uh, COVID challenge. We've seen massive donations to, um, the, for example, the, the, the provision of ambulances, uh, personal protective equipment by private organization and other spirited Nigerians and individuals. So this is, I think, the way to go so that we can quickly put uh, the, imp uh, the impact of COVID-19 behind us, uh, continue, begin to live with it, and obviously uh, uh, not to let other uh, sub-segment of the health sector continue to suffer. But the solution to it, I think, is that um, we are being challenged once again to ramp up our health infrastructure, not just in terms of physical facility, but in terms of personnel, so that we can cope with all, um, all that we need to cope with. First, uh, in terms of attending to those who are equally facing uh, life-threatening ailments like cancer, like bronchitis, like um, hypertension, like HIV, you know, like diabetes and the rest of them. These are also very deadly diseases and a lot of people are dying of, um, of, of, from these diseases according to statistics. You know, they also de 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 um, deserve equal attention. And all, our, all efforts should be made to ensure that these as people are not neglected because we are talking about health.